Sige. So, um, for us Filipinos, this is a momentous day. Uh, I, uh, Tony and I are, are of age and uh, <laughs> it's a problematic day precisely. And it aims also to uh, kalampagin yung mga powers that be because, you know, the Philippine health situation has not changed. And a lot of the root problems emanated from all the kabulastugan that happened how many years ago. So I am here to share about, uh, our work about the Rx box, where we integrated medical devices in the National Telehealth Service Program. So the first innovation that we put together was really the telehealth program in order to um, reach the people uh, in the more difficult communities. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so this is my take on today's uh, day. For those of you who are younger, uh, it remains to be a very difficult time. And, you know, um, all our struggles will have yet to uh, produce the results that we have, especially for the poor. As a community doctor, um, you know, the, the issues there uh, among the urban poor that I am engaging uh, persist and and we actually know that the promises of EDSA uh, was actually continued to be subverted, di ba? Kasi hindi naman talaga napalitan yung mga koroni na nasa. Yeah. So we struggled and tayong mga uh, bukas ang mulat, dapat ay mag-double time pa. And therefore, we are doing what we are doing. So next slide, please. So this is the Philippines. And we know that we are the first in the global climate risk index because of our archipelagic nature. And therefore, every time um, a typhoon happens, we have internally displaced populations. And why? Because um, one out of three Filipinos, one out of four Filipinos is poor. And while we uh, are privileged to attend conferences like this and have um, internet, hindi yan uh, sa karamihan. And those who are marginally poor, this perhaps uh, comprise 60% of the Filipino population. And our context is that our healthcare is devolved to the public sector, but this is essentially for uh, primary care facilities. No? Um, and in reality, if you think about 10 doctors in your mind, they will likely be in the private sector and therefore out-of-pocket spending is sizable. No? Um, the our rank as being 116th of 191 countries in the human development index packs in really the social determinants of health and why uh, we are suffering as we are suffering through many challenges in the country therefore next slide please and so just to underscore our health problems so when we thought about the rx box the situation was 60% of Filipinos die without seeing a health professional. We're not even talking about a, a doctor, but a health professional. And that's not um, theoretically a good way to die, you know? Parang the idea there is we have to live the best life that we can. And um, if if death occurs outside of the facility, that means hindi man lang na they didn't even enjoy their right to having health services available to them. And why why is that? Um, definitely because of the difficult geography, the limited resources, it, it results in poor access to quality care, which starts at the primary care level. Um, our health system remains to be fragmented, um, and therefore there are delays in intervention. And the outcomes, the poor health outcomes result into poor pro productivity, and therefore, you know, um, going through the cycle of widening the inequities at this point. Next slide. And so, therefore, we put together what is the RxBox research program. It actually started way back in 2007 or even 2004, and the core here is telehealth. And what we and what is the RxBox when we say the RxBox? It's essentially three um, health technologies um, coupled with capacity building. Because at the end of it all, it is a disruptive. Uh, it is a comp um, co uh, compound of complex technologies and it disrupts, you know, what is normally happening. We went through three iterations, and I will go through that um, essentially, but I will focus more on the 2012 um, 
version, if you may, no? uh, wherein we uh, 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 were successful in demonstrating seamless data exchange through three uh, digital platforms. So from the patient story where we embed um, embed it in the electronic medical record called CHITS, which we also at the UP pioneered. Um, in, in the event that they need more diagnostic tests, so the RX box was actually put together. And if in case a referral is needed to a specialist, the telehealth program, the National Telehealth Service platform is actually there to link uh, the specialists and the primary care physician positioned in the rural remote communities. So um, this technology is actually demonstrated also for the first time interoperability of systems um, using FHR uh, Fire. Um, and this is interesting because we actually pushed the Department of Health to be able to interlink a diagnostic uh, device to uh, their EMR. Um, so in theory, we wanted to actually demonstrate that it can happen. Next slide, please. So across the uh, across uh, what more than fifteen years since twenty oh four I start I stopped counting in twenty nineteen we were um, we were the re recipients of up to seven hundred million uh, pesos in research and development towards telehealth I think the best um, and this investment. Uh, resulted in the creation of the National eHealth Steering Committee, which we pushed for. So the results of all our initiatives um, had to result in a campaign and advocacy for better directions how ICTs can actually be used for health. And um, the Department of Health, the Department of Science and Technology, the University of the Philippines, Manila, PhilHealth, and CHED, the Commission on Higher Education, form the core of what is the National eHealth Steering Committee. Also underscoring that when you talk about digital uh, technologies, it has to be a multi-sectoral approach in order to reach you know, the development objectives. Next slide, please. And so again, what is the RX Box research program? It talks about chits, um, uh, an electronic medical record, and uh, that is linked seamlessly with the RX Box telehealth device and linked to telemedicine and targeting specifically patients with non-communicable diseases and oops, naputo yung sa ilalim, uh, but and pregnant patients. A close look here, you will see that the sensors of the RX box as a diagnostic device is um, an ECG very prominently. And this is really uh, in support of patients with uh, cardiac problems and other non-communicable diseases that result in cardiovascular disease. We also have a tachometer. Uh, we also have a tachometer, um, a fetal heart uh, monitor. Uh, this one helps in uh, maternal and child health, because typically um, these are the types of patients we see at the front lines of primary care. Next slide, please. So again, we underscore that the research program was built on telemedicine because the um, the intent is really to support the the uh, primary care physicians in the most difficult communities to be supported by their uh, by the clinical specialists. And the intent is really to improve the primary care system uh, where patients are uh, can access more easily these primary care physicians. Next, please. And how does it work? So the patient consults the doctor and in case there is a need, so the NTSP, the uh, National Telehealth Service uh, uh, Platform, will actually connect this to the regional clinical specialist or the one at the PGH and the current uh, and the specialty specialists that we, that we were able to engage are the following, from cardiology to dermatology to radiology, surgery, and so on. Okay, we actually modeled, uh, it's not intended only for PGH, but also the regional medical specialists. And we had that in mind way back in 2011 and 2012, precisely because the DOH said, you know, uh, the direction we are going is really to localize and make it really closer 
And fast forward, the the universal healthcare program uh, law already articulated what is a healthcare service network. So earlier on, we were demonstrating that it can happen, and these are the operate lessons from the operations of this project. Okay, so that's how the telehealth service program works. Next slide, please. We also wanted to strengthen primary care by um, making sure that the patient stories are stored in a better um, health information management system at primary care. So we wanted to transform a paper-based system into a digital um, information system, which is called the CHITS, the Community Health Information Tracking System Electronic Medical Record. And the beauty of the CHITS is that uh, we are able also to um, allow them to aggregate the data for their own um, use for uh, program management at the local level, as well as for submission to the Department of Health at various levels of the he uh, health system so that uh, program managers can recalibrate their policies as the data comes in. Um, one particular use of this is also for the Philippine Health Insurance Program to be able to uh, subsidize or um, reimburse the services granted by these service providers. So CHITS was built in into the National Telehealth Service Program in order to, again, strengthen primary care. Next, uh, next slide. And finally, uh, again, CHITS is an electronic medical record. It captures data at the point of care. And um, by digitizing things, you reduce the errors and improve efficiencies within the health facility. Um, when we did this way back in 2004, and even by the time I, um, I left the National Telehealth Center, majority of our health facilities were offline. Why? Because internet connectivity was really very poor, especially in remote um, communities. Next slide, please. Nevertheless, we can still do telemedicine um, uh, using whatever available technologies are. And the RX box, actually, next slide, please. Um, was introduced because, you know, primary care facilities, sh which should have this technology, do not have that one. I am a primary care doctor, and it is uh, disempowering that I don't have the right tools in order to more correctly define what is wrong with my patient so that I can support his care better, his or her care better. So the Rx box, next slide, please. Um, with the chits and telemedicine, next slide. And again, I underscore that there is an ECG here. So if you look into our major killers and major causes of illness, it's already now non-communicable diseases and cardiovascular diseases are uh, major killers of the Filipino. So the ECG, which was the part of the original set of um, sensors, uh, remained to be very valuable at the primary care facility. Um, when I became the National Telehealth Center director, I had to insist on having a tachometer and all of these maternal child health suite, I, I call this, because, because the, the population, the epidemiology of our patients at primary care are mothers seeking, um, seeking care for their uh, babies who are already born and also for their unborn children. So that had to be there precisely because we also wanted to campaign for better maternal and child health. In 2012, we were racing towards the MDGs, which were supposed to end by 2015. And uh, maternal deaths was still very, very much an uh, issue in the Philippines. And it continues to be an issue um, to date. That's why we had to expand the suite of the uh, sensors to include uh, this component. Um, it was envisioned to be modular so that you can, for the university, so that we can insert um, other technologies that are life-saving in primary care. Uh, next slide, please. So it's an e-health platform. It's an e-health program because it involves not only technologies, but capacity building and organizational development because you cannot, um, you cannot link, uh, uh, you cannot, you can only do this uh, or use these tools if the doctors are actually 
linked or the primary care providers are linked with uh, higher level or um, health facilities. Uh, it is an intervention that is demonstrated to be cost effective and producing high quality care at the front lines. Next slide, please. Okay, so it um, it honors what is the patient story. So the six R's of a rural health center workflow. So you register using CHITS, you retrieve the uh, patient's data at that level, you render care and document that, you record that, and if necessary, you refer the patient and then continuing to uh, refer that and you report the outcomes of all of these results, uh, of all of these interventions um, to your health facility, to your local government unit, or the higher levels of the health system. Next slide. Okay, so these are some pictures. Next, please. This is the, may the mayor of Mayorga, just to also support the program. So our intervention was really um, multi-sectoral, if you may, so that it engaged also uh, those who will continue on and those who are actually progressive enough to improve their facilities. Next slide, please. And so these are pictures in Mayorga Leite. So this were also, the, this is among the uh, region eight municipalities that were hard hit with Yolanda. And um, the fact that we were able to introduce these technologies, we were able to preserve at least their um, health records post Yolanda. And the building up of the infrastructure post Yolanda was sort of easier because of that. Okay. So here you can see uh, the midwives attending to a patient uh, who is pregnant using the Rx box and our nurse in Mayorga uh, encoding patient care. Okay. Next slide, please. And um, I just had to honor also our midwife who presented uh, their own Rx box experience in the local Department of Science and Technology um, research forum. So this, these are um, parang pictures from Piagapo, Lanao del Sur, a fourth class municipality of Barm, uh, Bangsamoro uh, um, uh, region. And um, you can see here, um, CHITS is actually also available uh, using uh, mobile technology. So within the health facility, they are able to um, use uh, CHITS across uh, all uh, stations in the facility. And this is also actually available. Um, also, we, we also have an RCHITS version intended really as an offline uh, system as the midwives go on field. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so does, does it work? Across our implementation in all 17 regions, we were in 163 rural health units and at least 2,100 local health professionals you know, learned about what is e-health uh, and what is uh, digital health and how do you ethically use um, um, electronic uh, systems for healthcare. And... Um, 150 rural health units were able to use the CHITS and therefore benefit, uh, potentially benefit from the social health insurance program. Um, across time, there were at least 3,000 consults from the primary care physicians with medical specialists based in PGH or their regional uh, medical specialists. And the Rx box itself, we logged at least 750,000 times it was used across uh, six, year, uh, six years that we use it. So we continued to uh, monitor uh, the use of the Rx box across time. Next slide, please. And just to demonstrate for those of you who are not in the Philippines, um, so Batanes is really our mo north, northmost uh, set of islands. This is very close to Taiwan. And um, this area is where we are being bullied. <laughs> just to demonstrate that, uh, that we aim to um, improve and provide uh, better health uh, systems from the most, the northernmost to the southernmost communities like Tawi Tawi uh, province. We also honor the governor of Tawi Tawi who really supported the participation of all the towns here because they had to put in counterparts during the research. Yeah? And uh, again, 
um, while there are only 163 thousand and the the service is intended for at least three million uh, Filipinos during our period of deployment from 2013 to 2017. Next slide. Yeah. Okay, next slide. Oh, okay, click. So at the end of it all, indeed, we were able to demonstrate that the RxBox program um, pr supported the health workers through better tools and access to expert advice when needed. And it improved the referral quality and the trust between institutions no? uh, now that there are no uh, faces and we are in it together for our constituents. So that that actually improved the, the quality of care that we are providing within the um, the org, the partners in the system. Next slide. Uh, next click please. So it supports the health facility by improving quality and efficiency and um, it improved service utilization because the income from the PhilHealth actually plowed in into um, improving facilities, supporting also technologies henceforth and definitely it added on to uh, health workers who are typically poorly paid, no? government health workers who are poorly paid. Next slide. Uh, please click. It supports, in the end, the service delivery network by connecting the health facilities and achieve better health systems goals. Next slide. Again, so in 20, 2007, uh, when it was first began by Dr. Alvin Marcello, a trauma surgeon, um, even the university had to uh, take notice that you know, it is an emerging discipline, this discipline called e-health. And um, the university was there to support the idea of collaboration um, interprofessionally because we can uh, address development issues better if you work um, together. So again, as we wanted to uh, demonstrate that the technology works, please click and so it first started because Dr. Marcel, uh, Eloy Alvin Marcelo was a tra uh, is a trauma and emergent trauma surgeon. It the focus then was really for the ER, so that patients who are coming in from the um, uh, in an ambulance can actually uh, generate the the data so that the ER personnel, the trauma uh, team, will be able to prepare better for that patient. Um, however. Um, However, uh, if you remember what uh, the internet connectivity was at that time, um, they, we really had to shift uh, or, or to put that aside further. And because I took over, I also wanted to, I insisted on primary care facilities being a stronger uh, facility so that, because this is precisely closer to the people. So in 2012, again, we had to refocus on maternal and child health, but at the same time also um, supporting the campaign towards the control of non-communicable diseases at the primary care level. And when 2020 hit, we had to reuse the entire RxBox system and focus also on um, COVID. And we are able to implement this in a thousand uh, facilities across the country to support um, all of these facilities. Okay, next slide, please. So it ends with that. Thank you. Laparing sound. It's no bigger than a shoebox. But this innovation is bridging the distance between medical professionals in urban centers and our Kababayans in remote and not so remote areas. It's called the RX Box. Thanks to advancements in medical technology, it can help diagnose patients from Apari to Holo in areas with no doctors. With its six basic instruments, including an electrocardiogram, doctors can check for vital signs and provide diagnosis, while in the comfort of city hospitals or in their private clinics. A device that can measure the electrical activity of the heart. An apparatus that can monitor contractions of a pregnant mother's uterus as well as the fetus's heart rate. 
and a tool that can monitor blood pressure, oxygen level in the blood, and body temperature. Who would have thought that all these medical devices can fit in one small portable gadget? This is the RX Box. The product of a collaboration between the National Telehealth Center of UP Manila, the Electrical and Electronics Engineering Institute of UP Diliman, and the Department of Science and Technology Advanced Science and Technology Institute. The RX Box is really a device. So there's a telemedicine device that supports also again the decision making of the health workers. So before it was really just our clinical capacities. So we listen to the patient, we physically examine them. The RX box device was to give them more um, objective data uh, what's happening to the patient. Because of its size and multiple capabilities, the RX box is a perfect gizmo for health centers with limited medical facilities. This device not only allows public health workers to monitor their patients' conditions more effectively, it also enables them to consult their findings with experts in the field. So what happens there is that doctors from the Philippine General Hospital of the UP and even the regional hospitals of Baguio General Hospital as well as East Visayas Medical Center. So the experts are supposed to be linked to their municipalities. But if a difficult case comes, they need support in terms of their decision making. The RX box is proving very helpful in local health centers indeed. But according to one of its original proponents, who happens to be Dr. Portia Marcellus Hasman, the device wasn't initially invented with public health patients in mind. As part of my experience in the emergency room, uh, with all of these surprises coming through the, the door of the emergency room, I said it would be a good idea if we could have a device that we can attach to a patient that will help the actual emergency medical technician assess the situation of the patient right there and then, but at the same time, transmit vital signs to the hospital so that the hospital will be forewarned and they can prepare. <laughs> From the initial goal of aiding trauma patients as they are transported to ERs, they realized it could be used in other ways. I was developing the device for the emergency room perspective. But then my wife is a community physician and she said, you know, for the same box, we can actually use it in the community and the clientele is much, much larger. Kung meron kang at least 300 pesos sa bulsa mo, sa private ka na lang magpupunta kasi parang ano ba yan, center, walang gamit, walang aircon, walang anything. So with the Oryx box, my dream talaga is for people, for Filipinos, to go back to public health centers. The first prototype of the RX box is not as sleek <laughs> as the current version, but its design has steadily improved. With great feedback from communities benefiting from the RX box, the team behind it is optimistic about its future prospects. When we deploy these boxes and then it starts transmitting data to a central facility, it will tell us what's the health of the nation. As early as now, the National Telehealth Center is already looking to level up the RX box to help detect other common diseases. We feel we have to grow into that. Uh, diabetes, that's chemical. So we still need to capture that. During the forum, we're looking forward to the Biotech M, so it's a dengue kit. But then again, that's still a, again, fluid. There are other ideas. So what are the major killers of the Filipino? This modular character is the reason for everyone's optimism. Seemingly, as medical technology further develops, there seems to be no limit to the uses of the RX box. My own life was changed by the RX box. I saw kung paano nagkaroon ng dignity ulit, nabalik yung pride ng mga health workers knowing that they can do more for their patients. I think RX box is a game changer because instead of focusing on the upper levels of healthcare, we're making a stand that primary healthcare is where we're going to make a difference. I think it's a game changer because um, 
it becomes a finger on the pulse. And every time a patient is connected to the Rx box, it's like you have put a finger on the pulse of the community. This is the health of the people around the Rx box. A handy doctor in a box. An amazing gift from trailblazers in the field of medical technology. The all-in-one gadget not only changes the game in remote diagnostics, it also addresses a glaring problem, the lack of doctors in the countryside. But just how has the RX box helped actual patients? That's next on Game Changer. Midas Hotel and Casino. Wow, and dami na natin questions. Uh, but before we, uh, uh, Dr. Kwasha, allow us to allow us to introduce Richard Matias. He's our ECE engineer as well as uh, one of our course creators, and he will actually connect our Xbox and um, your presentation to Asia Open Run. Uh, okay. Richard, before we we do the Q and A. Okay, thank you, Tony. Yeah, I was uh, really fascinated by the RX box. No? And uh, bago pa pala dumating tong 5G, I just realized we have it already in, in, in the country. <laughs> okay, so um, let me uh, support that uh, um, uh, great uh, uh, work coming from our doctors in the Philippines by supplying the open run 5G private network. Okay. So what is uh when we talk about open run and then 5G private network we will we will uh, separate it into these words now. So let's define first what is 5G. So when we talk about 5G, so this is a fifth fifth uh, generation and the latest and advanced wireless communication technology that is designed to provide uh, faster and um, uh, lower lower latency and increased reliability and support for greater number of devices. So it emerges from 2G, 3G, 4G, and right now we are in the era of 5G. So 5G is expected to have a significant impact on a wide range of industries, of course, including the healthcare, uh, transportation, manufacturing, and entertainment by enabling new uh, applications and services that were not possible with previous wireless technologies. So what are the key technology, uh, 5G key technologies and functionalities? Uh, first, uh, it has the three main use cases. So the 5G has the capability to give us, like for example, the use case of EMBB, the enhanced mobile broadband, in which we, it can give us high data rate and high capacity uh, network. Next, we have this uh, connectivity density of uh, massive machine type communications. So it can connect around 1 million devices per square kilometer. So this is how powerful 5G is. And in terms of latency, latency meaning the response of the network, how fast the network will respond. So it has this uh, ultra reliable and low latency communications. So it has a target of one millisecond latency and 99.999% of reliability. So what are the different technologies here? So 5G is also one of the technologies that has a wide range of frequency coming from the sub six gigahertz up to super six gigahertz. That is uh, meeting at 24 gigahertz to 86 gigahertz. And the frequencies we can use here could be a license like uh, the one that we are using right now with uh, the current telco uh, operators unlicensed, uh, like what we are using in the Wi-Fi frequencies, and uh, shared, which is uh, being uh, used also in United States, like for example, 3.5 gigahertz. And there are also other technologies that are uh, empowering uh, 5G, like for example, the, the massive MIMO, the millimeter wave frequencies, the, fre the flexible numerology, and so on. So these are the different uh, capabilities, functionalities, and technologies that will support 5G. Now, so we already defined what is 5G. Now it's, uh, let's go with Open RAN. So what is Open RAN? Open RAN means uh, this is a disaggregated RAN. So based from the traditionally, 
um, radio access network or the cell sites that we have have been built using a proprietary hardware and software coming from single vendor. So vendors like uh, Huawei, ZTE, Ericsson, Nokia. So those are the typical vendors that we have. And making it difficult and expensive for network operators to integrate products from different vendors, upgrade their networks, and introduce new services. So OpenRAN aims to address these challenges by using open interfaces and standardized hardware and software components that are designed to work together in different, uh, with different vendors. So what will happen from the, from the traditional uh, radio access network? First, we will disaggregate, meaning we will separate. We will separate the hardware and then we will decouple the hardware from the software. And after that, the hardware we can use a general purpose processor or the GPP hardware, which is uh, um, less costly than the typical hardware that we are using. And then we will activate it with an open source software. And the most importantly, we can use an open interface to ensure interoperability with different vendors. And in this uh, new um, movement, we will be putting intelligence in the network by the use of the run intelligent controller. So the run intelligent controller will handle the intelligent management system, okay? So this is the open run, okay? So let's see, uh, let's now define what is a private network, okay? So when we talk about private network, a private network is a wireless communication network that is uh, utilizing a technology that is designed to, you, to be used by a specific organization or group of organizations. So basically it's not available to public. So this is a, typically a private network. So a network that is based on open run and 5G architecture, which means it uses a standardized interoperable hardware and software components from multiple vendors and capable of a 5G technology. So that's what we mean by um, open run uh, 5G private network. So if we have this, this will allow organizations to build their own private networks using a mix of equipment from different vendors rather than being locked into a single vendor sa proprietary solution and can also use the power of the latest technology, which is 5G. Um, so there is a one use case that uh, in Brazil, which we have discussed or we have talked to them last week about the application of 5G open run in healthcare. So they call it the open care 5G use case. So it's a, it's a private network for digital health application used in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So it's a, um, somewhat same with our uh, uh, topic today. But this time, this, uh, this movement has used a different set of technology, which is uh, open care, uh, open run 5G technology. So it is also, uh, this is um, incorporated by digital health, which incorporated, incorporated the recent advances in health information technology by implementing uh, hardware, software, and IoT devices, big data and artificial intelligence to concentrate like for example, high volumes of information sent to the databases, applications, and to the network. So it enables uh, more accurate follow-up uh, follow and brings uh, greater security to patients, especially when performing tests remotely in real time to obtain the fastest diagnosis. So this project is a catalyst also of innovation in health, connecting resources and entrepreneurs to generate solutions for the innovation ecosystem and organization. So this is a well-coordinated uh, uh, effort uh, led by Deloitte with the participation of Escola Politecnica de USP, like uh, the University of Sao Paulo. And the radio that they have used is Airspan for the uh, radio access open run solution. And um, one interesting thing here is there is a participation of Itau Bank. So Itau Bank uh, serves as the IT infrastructure and 5G core. So with the Cisco, Dell, and HP equipment, 
they are using their infrastructure of its data center uh, located like for example nine kilometer from 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 the school and provided by the local telecom network and there is also participation by Siemens health engineers a medical uh, for medical solutions um, NEC NEC for system integration management and of network engineers and um, ADBI, which is a Ministry of, Econo of uh, Economy for regulatory advocacy support and support to education and technology promotion. So you can see that uh, in this uh, in this uh, project that they have done, there's a lot of uh, players that uh, supported the ecosystem, which also uh, supported the 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 sustainability of the project. Okay, so during their uh, during their uh, uh, implementation, there's there are also lessons learned that they have encountered during this uh, open run deployment uh, in the application of the healthcare sector. So first is the semiconductor crisis and logistics. Um, there is a semiconductor outage is still ongoing, uh, and then affects mostly new equipment such as la, the five D chips and accelerator cards. And they said that do not underestimate the, to import bureaucracy and lead times. So whenever they would like to import some, some materials or some equipment. So though that is one of the challenges that they have encountered. And then open run is not yet a plug and play. So the process of setting up an open run network is mostly manual. So there are some bugs and limitations still exist. And scale up may require multidisciplinary IT team for security and orchestration. And ecosystem key uh, players are key. So this is one of the uh, highlights that they have uh, pointed out that uh, they have assembled the balanced ecosystem of players with a common goal and non-competing competencies. And this helps align objectives and cooperation. So you can see there's a, a player coming from the bank which supplied the core network. There is a, a player supplied the radio access network and there is an integrator and there are some suppliers of the equipment. And of course, find the right sponsors. And who uh, the sponsors who can understand, promote, and push technologies are key. And doctors have the necessary influence in the healthcare ecosystem. So those, those are the, uh, that, 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 that is the, uh, one of the use case of the open run uh, 5G private network that, uh, that was uh, implemented in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Okay, Tony, that's, that ends my presentation. Thank you so much, so much Richard. Uh, you now have 10 questions in the Q&A box and congratulations. System applications that will cater medical services to the community with integration from Open Run. Hmm. Uh, again, I'm a clinician and a health doctor. So I think uh, Richard will be able to say that, uh, but talk about hmm. the the clinical applications to us. So um, remember, like right now, among 200 of you, who is actually sick? Or if ever, a lot of your conditions or medical conditions is primary care. So naglalakad tayo and so on. So that's precisely what I uh, envisioned that primary care services where it is close to you, they are uh, equipped with the tools that are necessary. Um, to run their operations from a clinical perspective and also for public health. Because um, as a public health doctor, as a community doctor working among the poor, but yeah, everybody deserves good services. And you also want to honor the health providers who are there with you know the tools that they need. Um, because that's that's what they are. Right? They need all of those tools. So um, what do you see? Ubot si po, ano, mo kailangan ng, ng uh, machine nun, di ba? And the EMR, sure, it will document your um, services, but you don't need telemedicine for that, di ba? Where you might need um, telehealth and more tools is precisely for non-communicable diseases and for maternal care, maternal and baby care in a way. So that's what we put that in. Of course, um, Remember, this was in 2007 when Dr. Um, Alvin was the first 
um, investigator of this uh, project, Rx Box, diba? Uh, he was looking at it from a surgeon's perspective, an ER surgeon's, a trauma surgeon's perspective. But um, it it shifted precisely in my time. Because I'm a as a as a researcher, diba? My, my milieu is primary care, so I wanted that. So that's one. But um, the the envision the vision was really. Diba, parang modular that you can plug and play, but I cannot answer how the technology actually works beyond that. Basta, diba, mm. diba, as, as product owner, this is our vision. Please help us, all of you who are our partners, and, and make it happen. Basta, you know, kailangan namin. Make it happen, whatever the technology is. And definitely, what we wanted to preserve, even if I didn't understand the technology around it, is you know, that's me. If I am that patient, don't tell me I have to input again into another machine, da da da, da ba? make it interoperable. So I learned that that's the process. And you can do that because I only have one identifier, da ba? it's my mm -hmm. name. And remember in 20, uh, 2011, when I came on board, wala, pang, wala pa tayong national ID, which is now very, very painfully coming out. Pala. <laughs> wala pa din. <laughs> Uh, but but nevertheless, and I think you know, um, I'm happy that the national ID is here, and certainly the health sector pushed for it. You know, all the pioneers uh, uh, worked on that one, and it's a huge contribution to our uh, system now. I know that it's happening, but um, definitely the health sector um, somewhat catalyzed, or at least uh, nagingay na hindi to pwedeng mangyare. No, wala tayong national ID. Okay. Thank you, Doc Portia. Um, actually, if, if Maria's here, well, Maria has uh, uh, more. I don't know. Um, she can. But we, we, we. Ako personally, I'm, I'm actually thinking if we can submit our Xbox to be one of the use cases for Open Run. If you will agree. Tama ba, Richard? Because it mm, might yeah. fall on your hand. Hindi rin ako gano'n ka-technical. Yes, actually. Uh, um, because when I when I look at the technologies of uh, or, or the connectivity of the RX box, we can connect the RX box into three ways. Via Ethernet, so you may, may cable, via Wi-Fi, and then via cellular. So we can go with the cellular, like 2G, 3G, and then there's probably there's uh, the new version is uh, capable for LTE. Yes, that's that's our current one. Um, let me invite you. There is actually an RX Box Summit in uh, Bohol where Dr. Louis Sison, who is the engineer mm -hmm. throughout the time of Dr. Alvin, to my uh, to my time, and when the COVID uh, emerged, we were now doing a telemetry version so that the health workers are, you know, uh, monitoring patients remotely. So we did that in PGH. No, we were remotely monitoring uh, obstetric patients, mater um, and uh, para ma minimize the encounter of patients with COVID and the health workers. So yes, so um, we can have further discussions around mm -hmm. that. continuous development, naman siya. And that would be a welcome development for the university if we, um, in fact, use this, no. So remember, we're in at least a thousand facilities. Yeah. Thank you, Doc. I'll uh, probably I'll just ask you details of that Bohol uh, RX Box uh, Symposium. Uh, the question of Jan Ian Bagyao, I will be asking you of that question later. I'll give you a panelist to be lang exam, no? uh, You will answer your question, but I'll go to Arnel Blue's best question. Um, can these access records from US-based Blue Cross or Blue Shield or Kaiser Permanente information? May mga AFAM relatives at mga US veterans that prefer mag-retire sa Pilipinas and they need access to medical records. Yes. Uh, number one, well, one of my first guests as a director of the National Telehealth Center is the Philippine Retirement Agency. And yeah, why not? The um, uh, definitely that can be uh, uh, shown. And in fact, um, well, of course, there are organizational things to put in place. Diba? How can you, uh, insurance to insurance, you need to talk about that. So 
there's a lot of interoperability coming from policy to human, diba? to the electronic mm -hmm. and so on. But definitely the whole system uh, is digital and therefore it can be made to talk with each other using standards. Diba? Yun lang naman ang, ang concern natin. Okay. So it can happen. And um, it has to be demonstrated. And, you know, the the uh, the law, so the, the universal healthcare law talks about the lacking that also of an integrate of uh, the creation of integrated health information systems that are, that are standards based, precisely because we're talking about our patients right? and we're talking about investments also right? mm -hmm. um, into the system, into the uh, so that uh, in the end, both the health system uh, is not you know, wasting time as we are also sacrificing care to our patients. Thank you. Uh, from Invictus Fiesta, any updated, upgraded medical technology regarding the RX box then 2020 or after the pandemic? Is there a next gen RX box? Okay. Right now, we ended in tw the 2016-2017 version, no? but we are using it for telemetry, which is just a software diba? Um, to link the data from and you're uh, showing it to a parang telemetry monitor. Um, I put in the chat box the UPC ball. So after I left, oh, the <clears throat> under the covid Peer, you would be actually innovated, and uh, the RX box is among the technologies we built on. And um, because I I graduated, if you may, I had to leave the National Talent Center to take care of my mom. But nevertheless, the the you know the the R and D continues under this because I'm back at with with the UP College of Medicine. So uh, this is called the UPC ball, no? So surgical. Uh, innovations and biotechnology. And why is it surgical? Because Arid is, a, is an orthopedic surgeon. So maraming innovations around that area as well. So um, there is continuous uh, development, uh, but the idea is to commercialize it also. So it's also under the university's uh, technology transfer and business development office um, uh, for, the, for the initial suites and so on. Is there any issue with our Xbox that can be improved with the current technology? Um, siguro yung mga if if we would like to add more uh, sa mga test sa mga test ano na mga test uh, functionalities ni Alex ako meron tayong isang idagdag and then the data bulk kung gaano kalaki yung data ng ipapadala natin and how fast we can we can do it. Like for example, if if the RX box is uh, located sa isang 2G or 3G network, and then malaki yung data na ipapadala mo, it's just like watching video, right? So you're just transmitting. So if you want to improve like that, we need to improve also yung technology capability ni RX box, like what I mentioned a while ago, yung 5G, which will give us a bigger bandwidth para mas mag magpapadala tayo ng mas uh, maraming data. Kung mag magdadagdag tayo ng mga additional use cases for RX box. Um, let me <clears throat> let me add there. No, right now the idea is it's supposed to be modular. In fact, kaya lang yung ginawa namin one portable unit, mm -hmm. uh, However, the idea there is that you can use uh, simultaneously with the other mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And um, you uh, so that's one area of development definitely. But the idea of it being a concentrator, and I think the technology people should debate that whether mm -hmm. that's good. Uh, remember, it's in primary care. So, ganun yung vision ko, di ba? Uh, certainly, it can um, grow into what the hospital actually needs. But I I, uh, I make a case, again, you have to invest in primary care first if you have to um, innovate. Ito ang dapat bigyan ng pansin. And maybe also, just to share, uh, we introduced this to Manila, Kahit na Manila siya, di ba? You know, the Manila City now has invested in ECG separately from a Doppler fetal monitor. So, di ba? So, they, they saw the value, among others, of course, di ba? They also want to improve their services. Pero yun, di ba? Slowly, um, um, the health sector is 
uh, and government, local government is investing on their own uh, health sector strengthening. I think uh, an area also of development, ISO, no matter how many cables, <laughs> diba? <laughs> it was like practically 10 years ago. So very, uh, that antedated IoT and so on. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah. generation uh, will have to, you know, talk about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Doc. Actually, ang nakikita ko is that the maternal health care, especially in the provinces, yeah. na hindi uso yung mga monthly ano, uh, check-up. So, pag nabuntis, mga nganak na lang, walang in between the mm -hmm. conception mm -hmm. to the ano, no, to the delivery. So, uh, I'm browsing uh, the questions. Um, Doc Porsche, do you still have time? Would, would you still... Uh, Five minutes. Okay. Um, communication system, uh, does RX box use? Nasagot na natin ba? Nasagot na natin yan. Okay. Uh, how is PII being handled? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. That's one of my requirements, but I cannot tell you uh, okay. <laughs> the technology around it, but definitely um, passwords diba? and encryption. Yun ang alam kong. <laughs> yun, just beyond that, di ko na alam kong how they, they manage mm -hmm. that. But um, remember, uh, we were as much as building capacities and introducing new concepts, no? as, as much as also campaigning about uh, privacy, confidentiality, and security. We actually introduced to them diba, parang, uh, NDAs about reminding uh, non-disclosure agreements, which are you know, organizational ways of securing information. Um, uh, but definitely... Uh, I hope, and I'm I'm sure our technology team did that uh, for me. And you know, I I have no way of really checking, except of course, if I need to access it, I still use the password and so on. So, to me, as a frontline user, I think that's sufficient for me to know, diba po? And even as um as a manager of the clinic, diba? Uh, uh, we also test tested that, and uh, my my the 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 engineering team. The development team also showed me logs of their uh, testing for all of these. Um, again, how is PII also managed? Siguro yung, um, what we used uh, was really local um, identifiers. Kasi nga wala naman national identifiers. Um, at most is the PhilHealth, di ba? So there's a local uh, local government uh, you know, first uh last name, and so on. Tapos meron silang folders, family folders. And then um, they had to be linked also with their PhilHealth ID numbers. Kasi mahalaga yon para sa reimbursements of um, uh, services that were rendered. Uh, so uh, that's as much that I can answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm just uh, just seeing questions. Uh, yung isa po from Arnel Gruspe, Doc, uh, uh, Dr. Portia, how much is the cost of RX box? Yeah. And uh, may nagtatanong din where, uh, kung, where is it already implemented? I think it was not specifically mentioned in the presentation. So they thought that this is still a concept. No, RX box has already been implemented. So we implemented our RX box Tawi Tawi wide, District 1, Iloilo. Why? Namatay na si Congressman Garin, the old Garin, di ba? So, uh, and then from Batanes to, and to Tawi Tawi, uh, and in between. You, you saw pictures of Dr. Uh, K.M. Magtubo, who was in uh, Mayor Galete, and so on. But remember, this was circa 2013 to 2017. So, the next round of implementation naman na 1,000. Uh, areas, general 1,000 areas, but the DOST 4A, uh, uh, 4A was the one in charge of disseminating it too. And we went through the pandemic. That's why we're going to be in Bohol next week. Uh, they're going to, uh, that's how we actually, uh, parang, uh, that's one of the implementation sites. Manila also, so that there was another version, City of Manila was a version. Uh, we had that one in I think 2015, pero nung pinuntahan nga namin, they couldn't implement it kasi, again, counterparting yun, ano? So, dun sa health facility, kaya, pero kulang ng other uh, terminals. Um, mm -hmm. city, we also demonstrated in one lying-in facility. 
um do for siya, um are you comfortable to cite or to give at least a ballpark figure of how much the rx box remember i'm i'm sharing from an r d perspective if you put okay. them all together the, the research under my term amounted to maybe 200 or 250 uh million commute pesos diba, in r d so at the time when we were presenting uh it was still about 350,000. Diba? Okay. Pero, yung mga ng mga teams namin and all of that uh -huh. research uh, at that point. No? Um, but the machine itself, in terms of production, we wanted to bring it down to less than 100,000. And if you compare it with the commercial devices, an ECG at that time was 250,000. A tachometer was around 250,000. Circa 20... 12 to ha so um sorry i didn't update <laughs> for today <laughs> around that much that's why we wanted it all together in that portable device and when we uh, manufactured for a thousand ganun yung cost na nilagay namin for r d alone and and i think for device makers diba? parang 1000 devices parang not worth the investment masyadong konti, di ba? So, but they agreed. So, I also want to honor our partner there. Uh, Doc, is it commercially available already? Yeah. Yeah, not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay. Uh, open source po ba yung project just in case may isang angel investor? Um, Please talk with RUP, Manila, TTVDO. Yeah, we've been, and then that, that's part of my work, the BAM, as an inventor, we and the university, the parang, how do you make it more available? And that's our problem, no? When, when research funds and how do we provide support? Nakiki usap na lang ako, buti na lang oh, memo. Yes. Nag, diba, na nag overlap so mm -hmm. I borrow my team, who is now in another project, to provide support for the for the uh, continuing uh, parang needs, diba? through telehealth, the chits, and so on. So um, commercialization is a must diba? when you develop an innovative service and product. And these are services and products. And um, that is precisely what diba? innovation is meant to do, to really expand the reach. Uh, who can access the medical records of patients in RxBox? Our, our Xbox, uh, will it be uploaded to the database cloud and user and password provided per patient or is it the doctor? Well, number one, clinicians only or the clinicians of that uh, patient. Like um, Dr. Richard, uh, if you are not the doctor of patient Alvin Marcelo, you should not access that. Right? So, uh, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. But for instance, um, uh, Nurse Tony is part of my team, then you are uh, deputized to have access to that one. Oh, okay. But you know, there's a, there is a vision, in fact, that uh, there is a shared data record precisely because you're transferring patients. And um, that's what we hope, and that's what we demonstrated actually in our mug in a tele-referral system, diba? so uh, MINTS in Quezon City. So we demonstrated uh, from the primary care facility to the lying in to the Quezon City General Hospital, you can actually uh, have a shared uh, data uh, uh, database, which is maintained by the Quezon City uh, IT office. Diba? And um, it becomes uh, interoperable, hopefully, with their own uh, tax database for for whatever purposes, diba? But uh, as far as health is concerned, we were able to demonstrate in that particular research that one database at the city is actually good. We were able to connect it, in fact, diba, to so the health sector is now connected to their uh, CRVS, civil registration and vital statistics sector. So their local civil registrar, to say um, the information of a baby diba, that we put in the electronic medical record is actually the same general information needed for to generate the birth certificate. So we were able to demonstrate that. And their IT office was the one about, um, ensuring not only the, the technology, but the maintenance of the server.
Doc Porsche, there's a question if the Bohol Summit is open to the public because um, uh, Sir Benjamin here has a son-in-law who, who is an MHO in another town. Wow, I think so. Um, please contact me. Uh, it's really the Department of Science and Technology uh, uh, who's managing this. And I can share with you the, who is the, um, uh, <laughs> the contact person. Uh, for the participants, I will just uh, ask that from Doc uh, Portia and then uh, email me so I will give the, the details to you. Um, um, <coughs> sorry, aside from heart rate, uh, CO2, temperature, and BP, what other available sensor, lo a local sensor, can you recommend that pwede po magamit to check vital signs of persons with pneumonia? Ah, okay. So for, for pneumonia, um... Right now, the, the vital signs are important already, which you listed. The, the SpO2 is actually necessary for oxygenation. So that's that should be sufficient at this point. If you're looking for a stethoscope, yeah, and so Seaball actually put put uh, uh, an EAT stethoscope um, research. It's under research. Whether they're going to connect it with the RX box, that's perhaps the future direction. Um, Definitely, uh, with the COVID lockdowns, having a personal uh, machine and monitor. So you call that a remote uh, monitoring device, diba? And it's actually happening already elsewhere. So patients with um, cardiac disease, and they, they can be actually monitored at home. Diba? Those who are post um uh, MI, uh, post-ICU care, they can actually be monitored at home. Diba? So this is all actually happening uh, already. But um, the most that we did was during the COVID pandemic, but it was only with the patients uh, at their own bed diba? and the nurse's station. So you call that telemetry. So we, we did that for this iteration, the 2020 version. And, and, but I don't have data. It will be presented in the in the summit. Yeah. Um, Leslie, uh, Leslie here has is, is not actually a question. It's more of a comment that this is a very good initiative or project. Hope that our government will support and provide budget for this. This is a great help to our medical practitioners and also our patients, especially in the remote areas. This is a good help if our telco operators, uh, if we have global participants in this webinar. Will further enhance our coverage capacity and transmission latencies to help in advance these initiatives. And I'm expecting our participants to give a good word about this RX box, especially mm -hmm. those in the provinces. Uh, we wow. have Rene Salmingo here. Tony, let yes. me on that. You know, okay. the part of our work is really to advocate for you know the benefits of uh, digital health. However, when we were talking about um, telemedicine and so on. The telcos that we in, invited said, "Ang konti, <laughs> de ba? How much? Uh, de ba? What is our ROI on all of that? Remember, that's why. Uh, what is our ROI? And 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 we talked about the ecosystem. So that's their issue. Uh, that that's their issue in the early part of this decade or 2010s, the earlier decade while I was very active in this area. Okay, I know you know things have changed." Fast forward, and I'm a consultant to this project about regulations. Naman. Why is it not encouraging the, the industry to grow? And uh, we're looking in that area as well. But, you know, in the end, telehealth is also a disruptive, disruptive mm -hmm. technology. And whether it's actually, um, is the investment uh, sufficient the, to earn? Yeah, well, that, that's, that's a whole uh, discussion at that point, no. Um, but definitely, the the pandemic opened a lot of doors, and uh, 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 it's fast, but it's um, enabling all of these innovations better than during my time or even the time of Dr. Alvin when he was uh, active in the R and D area. Um, Doc, there is a suggestion to go to go towards the GoFundMe or crowdsource initiative. <laughs> Is the DM ready for that? Wait, go fund me or for patients, please. But thank you for that suggestion. But that is not the route for this. Definitely, uh, 
government as the biggest buyer diba, of uh, government-funded R&D uh, is something uh, that uh, uh, is an area to go into. Um, just for instance, when COVID, the COVID pandemic hit, diba, uh, buying from our own parang Filipino inventions and inventors is ac actually makes sense. No? Um, the RX box is good in the sense that um, we also campaigned with our FDA and they didn't actually know what to do with experimental devices. Diba? So we actually initiated or fomented that discourse. So they now have a better process because of all of the problems with us. So the next set of uh, R&D uh, Filipino inventors have a better process of having the provisional license of developing an invention and implementing it among people. Because it's safe then, right? Yeah. So, okay. And so on. Yeah. Um, you can, uh, for the participants, you can actually inform your LGUs about this. Considering that all LGUs have an additional 26% starting last year because of the Garcia Mandana's law. So instead of, you know, Kalamayas LGUs natin will be tearing or destructing the gold, good old roads again for incoming elections, spend your money on RX Bucks. Uh, is telehealth and e consulta related? I think uh, this is beyond our, ex our, our topic. No, e consulta, uh, the primary care package of Globe. No, uh, uh -huh. no, wait. I'm from the University of the Philippines. So there are telehealth service providers already mm -hmm. in the country. We pioneered it at the UP, but uh, there are private. Um, companies who have put together their own telemedicine services. And Globe was among the first ones to do. Uh, for, for both RxBox and Open Health, how do we ensure that we are compliant with HIPAA information guidelines? HIPAA. We don't have HIPAA in the Philippines. What we have is the Data Privacy Act. And uh, and um, they have a system the uh, oh, the DICT, the National Privacy Commission, and the Cyber Crime, um, what do you call that division of the DICT, have processes the to uh, test your systems for all of these, and then of course they monitor breaches uh, after that. So HIPAA is uh, an American version of our own local policy.